The theme of this class is the measurement of length and weight. Let's look at the procedure for taking data. First, we will measure the length and weight of one brass column, A, and three copper cylinders, B, C, and D, in the picture. In the foreground is a 30 cm ruler, which should give you an idea of the size of the column and cylinders. The two tools shown in this photo are used to measure the experiment. The one in the foreground is a caliper, and the one behind it is a top plate scale. With the top plate scale, you place the object to be measured on the top plate and measure its weight. To measure, read the value indicated by the red needle in the screen. The caliper is used to measure length. Place the object to be measured between the outer jaws, as shown in the screen. Using the scale on the caliper, you can measure the length of the object. First, let's take a look at how to measure weight. This is a picture of the top plate scale without anything on it. Since there is nothing on it, the weight is zero. However, if you look carefully, you can see that the red needle is pointing slightly away from zero, to the minus side. There is also a way to adjust the needle so that it is zero in this state. However, in this experiment, we will record the value of the scale in this state, and subtract it from the measurement result. So we need to be careful when organizing the data. When measuring the weight of a column or cylinder, place it as gently as possible. At first, the red needle will vibrate a little. When the vibration of the needle stops, read the value indicated by the needle. If you do not look at the scale directly in front of you, with your eyes perpendicular to it, you will read the wrong measured value. This is important to keep in mind when taking readings. Next, we will see how to measure the diameter of a cylinder. To measure the diameter, place the caliper on the cylinder like this. The cross section of a cylinder is not necessarily perfect circle. Therefore, the measurement value may vary depending on where you place the caliper. In order to average out such effects in the measurement, once you have taken the measurement, rotate the cylinder slightly, and then measure the diameter of a different part the next time. Repeat this process to measure the circumference of the cylinder evenly. When measuring the length of the cylinder, place the calipers as shown on the screen. In this case, too, the length of the cylinder may be different depending on where you measure. Once you have taken the measurement, rotate the cylinder and measure another point, and repeat this procedure. The last step is to measure the thickness of the cylinder. In this case, it is especially important that the jaws are perfectly aligned with the edge of the cylinder to get an accurate measurement. Even in this measurement, the thickness may vary slightly from place to place, so rotate the cylinder to take the measurement. Taking measurements in this way will give us the necessary measurement data. Here is a summary of this measurement and data. In this experiment, we measured one brass column and three copper cylinders. For each, we measured the diameter and length, and for the cylinders we also measured the thickness. Each measurement was taken five times, and the results were recorded in a logbook. Based on this record, estimate the mean values of length and weight and their standard deviations.